guys, welcome to Who's Junction. Today we just received the news that David Blatt has been relieved of his duties. Unfortunately for David Blatt, what he was doing was not good enough. My initial reaction to this was, too little too late. The Cleveland Cavaliers had a chance to fire David Blatt last season and they signed him up for one more season. They said, okay, we're not going to get rid of you, we're going to we're going to stay the course. We made it to the NBA Finals. We beat everybody in our path. This year was an even better year for them. They were the first in the East, unlike last year. And this year, they're 30 and 11. They were ranked fourth offensively and ranked fourth defensively in the NBA. So top 10 in both categories that really matter when you're trying to chase the NBA championship. And these idiots went ahead and fired David Blatt. From the beginning, David Blatt was meant to be the fall guy for the Cleveland Cavaliers. This is a, a shame. This is a sham. This is a mockery. This is any word that you want to throw in there. This is just quite, literally, it's just dis despicable. It's disgusting to even, for, for me to even be making this video it makes my stomach turn. You Cleveland Cavaliers, you guys are on top of the East. Your team is not the best team in the NBA, but you're not the worst team in the NBA. You're the, you're the third best team in the NBA, and you fire your head coach, stating that there was a lack of fit, and Tyron Lue will be the interim head coach. I hope this wasn't the plan all along, to make David Black the fall guy and promote Tyron Lue so he could become the new head coach for the Cleveland Cavaliers, because their problems are deeply rooted. They have nothing to do with the offensive system have nothing to do with how many minutes a player is getting. It's pretty much just getting past the roadblock of appeasing LeBron James. LeBron James runs the Cleveland Cavaliers. He tells them what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. He, he incited the trade for Kevin Love. Everything they've been doing has been per LeBron James. They're just not saying it. And David Griffin at the media session saying that LeBron James does not run this um, organization. Just him saying that, he's already acknowledging what what it is. He does run the organization because a real general manager wouldn't even have to answer that question. He would just say, we do things based upon what we think is best for the organization, and that's that. It is, it is disgusting, utterly disgusting, a coach that has his team number one in the East. 30 and 11. They just, they, a week ago, they came off an eight-game winning streak. For him to get fired. For somebody who is getting crossed over by Allen Iverson and stepped over. It just makes absolutely no sense. Back in the day, you used to actually have to be an assistant coach for 10 years, 8 to 10 years, and put in your dues. But nowadays, these guys are just getting beamed up like nothing. It, ma it makes absolutely no sense how you even fathom Tyron Lue would be a good replacement. It makes no sense when you have a... Uh, Casey on the bench, who used to coach the Milwaukee Bucks. This is really disgusting to me. I mean, what what was it? Was it the fact that he didn't kiss LeBron's ass? What was it? Was it the fact that he didn't make Kevin Love happy because he wouldn't go to his rescue when LeBron would attack him publicly? What was it that got the guy fired? They were f ranked fourth offensively. You're ranked fourth defensively. In terms of points... You're just below average at 16th. And in terms of a defense, your opponent points, you're ranked third in the NBA points per game at around 95. What was the problem? And I understand that everybody was saying that Kevin Love wasn't getting the ball. A lot of guys weren't getting involved in offense. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? David Blatt is well known for his offensive savvy. He won five championships in Israel with his offensive system. And when you ask us why wasn't he running in Cleveland, well, I, I I have no idea. Maybe there's a guy by the name of LeBron James. Maybe there's another guy by the name of Kyrie Irving. They love to run pick and roll. And the, the idea of running something other than pick and roll made them feel uncomfortable. Essentially, the Cleveland Cavaliers, they went ahead and quit on their coach. And they boycotted his system throughout the whole season. David Blatt is no idiot on how to run offense, ladies and gentlemen. Steve Kerr was going to go ahead and hire him and have him as an assistant coach, but the Cavaliers got to him first and hired him. So pretty much, 
I'm going to tell you what happened. LeBron wasn't feeling this uh, three-man weave. LeBron wasn't feeling the fact that, you know, okay, now we got to defer more. I, got, I have to defer more. LeBron wasn't, wasn't happy with that concept because when he came to Cleveland, his whole idea was, you build around me, we win the championship on my back, I get all the glory, that's that, and that's final. What happened was, they brought in a guy who wasn't a yes man. They brought in a guy who actually has accolades, not in the NBA, but in other leagues, who knows about the game of basketball. I mean, you know it's, you know it's horrendous when Rick Carlisle is saying that he's embarrassed for the league. And it, it, it really is an embarrassment. You bring in a guy, he brings a team, he has them at the uh, number one spot in the East. They, they, play, they play pretty good basketball. They just can't get over the hump against premier teams, which they would eventually figure out once they would start sharing the ball, if they would stop boycotting the system. And you fire the guy. I mean, he, 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 he's not the best coach in the NBA, but he's not the worst by any stretch of the imagination. It makes absolutely no sense. I am very, very embarrassed. I am very disgusted. I think that the pressure is getting to the general manager, David Griffin. The pressure that LeBron James is putting on for them to win an NBA championship. He's looking at his prime. He's thinking that, okay, I have X amount of years to win X amount of championships. To me, this is just a whole ego trip. And even if LeBron doesn't want to admit it or people don't want to blame LeBron or they want to say that David Blatt takes a lot of the blame, whatever, my thing is this. David Black does deserve some kind of blame for them being 30 and 11. Uh, uh, I don't know what blame do you want there. It's a great record. You're first in the East. But the players have to take the brunt of this thing. Because what essentially what they did is they, they've opened the door for the Chicago Bulls, Detroit Pistons, Indiana Pacers. When you're going through a lot of turmoil internally and you fire your head coach of a good team in the middle of the season, you're setting yourself up for failure, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to set yourself up for failure because now the continuity that you had during the season when you were winning games and the team was pretty decent, now you got to go ahead and go through a whole different person, through a different animal. It's a whole different beast now. And now what you're going to be seeing is a lot more pick and roll, a lot more isolation by the Cleveland Cavaliers. This right here is a great, it's a huge debacle. It's a huge debacle. That, to me, it's, it's like... The Golden State Warriors firing Steve Kerr mid right now. What for? And that's those are the kind of things that don't make sense. But when it's LeBron James, LeBron's league, and LeBron's organization, as he oh he doesn't run the organization. And meanwhile, he's you know David Griffin's a puppet. You know it's it's disgusting, man. What I can attribute this to? This is similar to. A, per, a, a boyfriend and girlfriend. Boyfriend cheats on his girlfriend. She forgives him. They get married a couple months later. Six months into the marriage, she says, no, 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 no. I still remember when you cheated on me last year. I don't want anything to do with you. Let's get a divorce right now. The Cleveland Cavaliers, you guys signed up for this guy one more year. You guys were okay with what he did. You guys went to the NBA Finals. Minus Kev, uh, Kevin Love. Minus Kyrie Irving. And still figured out a way to make it to the NBA Finals. You, I know LeBron had a great um, Finals stretch. But it wasn't just LeBron that, that helped them get there. It was the coaching that also assisted in getting there. You don't remember all those big games that Della Vadova had. All those big games that J.R. Smith had. All of that was from the stuff that, they were, that David Black had them running when they didn't have Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving in the picture. All that was just the chess matches that were being taken place that he was doing. Eventually, you know, he, he crapped out because without the talent, you can't win. But he took you to the NBA Finals, ladies and gentlemen, last year. It's not even a whole season, and you're going to go ahead and fire the guy. I'm utterly, utterly, sh I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm not even a fan of the Cavaliers. I'm just, I feel sorry for the fans because you, you, you guys don't know how to win. And when I mean you don't know how to win, you just haven't had a winning culture. And now that winning has been a part of the culture for the Cavs, they completely crap shooted it and just shot themselves in the foot. It's like a, it's like a person that's handling a revolver for the first time. You know, like 
A couple of times they shoot, they're pretty good. But then that one time they didn't hold down that wrist, they get slapped in the head with the butt of, you know, the back of the gun. And that's what's happening here, ladies and gentlemen. You guys were winning. You guys had a winning record. Guys were playing decent. I mean, <coughs> pardon me. Guys were playing decent. And you mean to tell me that you're going to fire the head coach? And another thing is, you, David Griffin and, and all, the, all, all the coaching staff, they brought back Kyrie Irving way too early. Kyrie Irving was supposed to come back after the All-Star break. But due to the pressures of LeBron and them not playing too well, they brought Kyrie Irving back a little sooner than early, sooner than he had to be. And now look how he's playing. He's not 100%. And we could all see that on the court. You know, he's he he belabors sometimes, and sometimes he's just not there. He can't he can't get to the points that he wants to get to. His handle is still there, but his overall game is not there. So you mean to tell me that you're <clears throat> putting pinning all the fact that they're not playing at a hundred percent now on David Black? If you would have just stuck with him as soon as they would have got to the playoffs, I think that he would have shaped up the roster a little bit better. I think that he would have seen what kind of actions in the offense they like a little bit better. He hasn't even been in the NBA for two whole seasons and you fire him. I mean, give the guy the courtesy of two whole seasons. I don't know what else to say about this organization. It is it is a sham. It's a sham. It's a mockery, man. It's a mockery. And David Griffin, your job isn't safe either. So the same way that you just citing... Uh, a different kind of fit. Guess who's gonna fit out if you, if they don't win this year? You are as well. It's sad. It's sad that they want to win the championship so bad to the point where they don't understand when they're winning and when they're losing. And getting rid of your head coach mid season when you're winning is a losing move. And I don't think that they understand that quite yet. I mean, <clears throat> maybe LeBron could play a little inspired basketball. Because somebody's not telling him the truth now. Maybe, you know, he doesn't like the way that the delivery. Because like, you could tell that David Black is not, he doesn't kiss ass. He's not a yes man. He's not going to kiss ass. He's not going to say, yeah, yeah, you know, we're great. I feel like I feel like this is, I feel like progress. You know, he was saying, he was like, you know, I feel like on a road trip, we were getting a little beside ourselves. I feel like we were doing this a little bit here and there. You know, sort of like Phil Jackson used to do it. Take jabs at Kobe. Take jabs at Jordan. I feel like, you know... So people don't you don't need somebody to kiss your ass every day for you to get the point for you to understand what's going on with your team not not at all you know so you need people in your corner to tell you the truth and i guess the truth was too it hurt too much uh, i guess he rubbed kevin love the wrong way Kyrie Irving the wrong way and lebron james the wrong way because seriously if i'm in that locker room and we have a winning record and my team is playing okay. It's not 100% yet, but it's, it's still a lot of season left. Halfway through the season. Still pretty good. And you telling me that you fired my head coach? I'm going to be pissed. Because if you told Stephen Curry we're firing Steve Kerr and we're going to replace him with Luke Walton, I, I bet you Stephen Curry will probably not even play a couple games. Period. Point blank, period. You. This is the most disgusting, degrading, unimaginable thing that I've, I've seen any organization do. It makes absolutely no sense. You guys were just in the NBA Finals with the guy. With the guy. <laughs> you go midway through the season, you haven't had a four-game losing streak or anything like that. Nothing. The whole season. 30-11. and 11, And you fire the guy. It's, it's a crying shame, man. It's a crying shame. This this is disgusting, man. And, and I'm not even a big fan of David Black, but what I understand is why bring him back just to fire him again? It's like Jay-Z said, they build you up to break you down to build you up again. You know, like, why? What did he do? What exactly did he do? What didn't fit? His lips didn't fit to LeBron's butt. I mean, everybody's lips don't do not do that. Everybody doesn't bow down. Everybody doesn't kneel to the king, ladies and gentlemen. But now, the fire David Black, it's all on you. Everything, Anything that's going to happen from now, moving on forward, it's all on you. You fuck up, it's on you. You, you Tyron Lue's not doing a great job, it's on you. Because you fired a guy that was doing a decent job. The team wasn't... Bad. You're the third best team in the NBA. Period. 
You know, once Kyrie would have gotten his legs under him, or maybe if they shut him down for a little, brought him back, and once Kevin Love uh, stopped being, stopped bitching up or whatever the case is, and and they started running more action for him, things would have gotten way better. They're just desperate. They're just so desperate to win the NBA championship that they're willing to cut the team off any kind of way. I I I, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to trade Kevin Love or if they. I wouldn't be surprised now with the Cavaliers. I'm not surprised with anything that they do. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to trade anybody, try to bring in anybody else. I wouldn't be surprised. This is ridiculous. This is like, this is crazy, man. This this makes no sense. Makes no sense at all. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's. It, I'm speechless. I'm borderline. I've never been like this speechless before. It's just ridiculous. But let me know what you think about this, man. I want to hear you weigh in. Do you think that David Black deserved to get fired? Do you think that things would have been getting a little bit better? Do you think that David Black was set up for failure from the beginning? I want to know. I want to hear what you got to say. This is Vlad from Hoops Junction. You can check out more content at hoopsjunction.com. Check us out on Twitter and Instagram at Who's Junction. Who's Junction, man, where hoops meets hoopla. Peace.